Okay, our news time is 819, 79 degrees. Mike Nichols here once again on Mike's Animal uh, Kingdom slash Swap Shop. Glad to have you along. Thank you very much for uh, for waiting, Lisa. Hi, how are you doing? I'm doing well. For those who don't know, where are you calling from? I'm calling from San Diego. I just need us, San Diego. San Diego. I bet it's pretty down there today. It's beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful area. Well, tell us, uh, tell us what, uh, why you called. I, you're uh, an animal communicator, is that correct? I am. Tell us how, uh, this is the, the kind of the lead in I give all of our animal communicators, and that is, when did you, when were you aware you could do this, and uh, approximately how old were you at the time? Well, I am. In other words, were you a child, or? No, I wasn't. I actually, I've been doing tarot for Oh, since I was 16 years old. That mm. I've been doing since I was very young. Mm-hmm. So I've been doing this kind of work. I've been using my telepathic skills for a long time. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't until, um, I think it was about 2004, I had a cat die. And we had called somebody. We we had rescued this cat, and I called the person who... A person who I used to work with, she she ran a rescue organization. Mm -hmm. I told her that we were going to have to put this cat to sleep, and, you know, I was just calling her to tell her. And um, she sent over an animal communicator to help us help that cat cross Mm -hmm. in the spirit. And we had talked about it. My husband and I had talked about it. We didn't really know too much about it, but we had kind of talked about it to see if we could get our two cats to get along and stuff, but we never really made that step and called one. Mm -hmm. And when this woman started talking to to our cats, it was, it was so stunning that, that, I mean, we could actually, we actually knew she wasn't there at the time, but we actually knew they were, she was talking to them and the the reactions that they had to her, and then she helped us the one cat cross, and uh, she and I became friends, and and I started talking to her about, it, and she's going, no, if you can do tarot, you can do this, and uh, so I went, I took a class with Carol Gurney, who is in um, Westlake, I believe, mm-hmm. and uh, and then I was living in the Central Coast at the time, which was a, a fairly conservative small community so i didn't have much chance to practice so i started an animal communication forum and that's where i got a lot of my practice i just you know people would post their animals and i would just start talking to them and and posting and i i started getting my my feedback was getting better and better and then i just became professional well just to catch you a little bit off guard here have you got a, a story that comes to mind that uh you know one of the maybe the most interesting story or one that you could uh, tell our listeners, you know. Yeah, I could tell you the most interesting animal. (laughs) Yeah. Um, I've talked, the the most interesting type of animal I've talked to, or I've talked to two monkeys. Oh, did you? Yeah. (laughs) I know know nothing about monkeys, you know. Little monkey talk on the side there. A little monkey talk, yes. (laughs) And uh, if I remember correctly, one of the monkeys, was being mean to the other monkey. Uh-huh. She was, I think it was a he and a she, and he was kind of being mean to the to the female monkey, kind of hitting her all the time, and mm-hmm. they just weren't getting along. And I talked to them, and I, I gave him a job, and animals like to have jobs, just like people do. They really? like to feel, yeah, they like to feel useful, and, and you know, even if it's, you know, watching to make sure nothing comes in the crack between the doors, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, sure. they like to have jobs. And so I gave him the job of looking after her and grooming her. And um, well, making now how did sure you get him to do that? You just uh, communicate, communicated to him that that's what needed to be done or? Yeah, I, I told him I, I do mostly by um, by audio and by by visualizing. Okay. And so I visualized him, you know, being nice to her and getting along and 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 them grooming each other. Did it work? It did. Two weeks later, she posted back and she said, "I've got two. It's like two new monkeys on my hands." Wow. She, she's. I've never seen anything like it after since you've talked to them. It's been getting along, and then this morning, I couldn't believe it. 
I woke up and they were grooming each other, and she took a picture and she posted it. For so I have it on my website. <laughs> yeah, that's an interesting. That's a very interesting story. Yeah. Uh, speaking of websites, uh, uh, what is your website? It's pausetalk.net. That would be www. Mm-hmm. Pause. net. Interesting. Very, very interesting. Um, but your your main uh, bailiwick is, is like dogs and cats, is that right? Yeah, you know, I mean, dogs, cats, horses occasionally. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, most people that call me, it's for dogs and cats. And um, we, had a lady you know, ca- we had a lady call, oh, two or three weeks ago and had an interesting horse story. Uh, the horse would run. I think it was mostly a mud, a mudder, mm-hmm. but it couldn't. It just couldn't get things done on the grass, and uh, the owner of the horse just couldn't. You know, she was just blowing it, trying to figure out how to, what was going on with this horse. And the communicator found out that the horse, uh, his hoofs, hurt in the grass, or he's or something to do with his shoes too, if I remember right. He couldn't operate correctly in the grass like he did in the mud. Might have been vice versa. I can't remember now. But as soon as mm-hmm. that as soon as that was rectified, uh, the horse did fine in both. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's that's that. very common, and you know just little things like that. I had something similar with a dog just a few weeks ago. Um, it wasn't necessarily that the dog was having problems, but I I said you know not not having visible problems that she was calling me about, but had very cracked and coarse. Um, pads on his feet that that were hurting him and i i told you need to you know talk to the vet and get something to to soften those up because they kind of hurt when he walked yeah this was kind of a similar story i had a horse that uh, could communicate to me quite well yeah yeah, they absolutely do well he would follow me around like a puppy when i was cleaning up after him and stuff like that i had him on my property but here's the way he communicated to me when it was when i wanted to ride he would just turn turn with his uh, uh, his rear end facing me, his ears uh, flat on his head, and he'd say, "Come on, bring it on." Oh, that's great. You know, you want to you want to ride? Well, you're you're gonna have to earn it. Mm-hmm. And uh, once I got the bridle on him, about an hour later, <laughs> then, mm-hmm. then everything worked out. It was just fine. But he was, uh, and I see a lot of horses doing that. You know, they just say, "Well, you're not gonna ride today if you you're gonna get kicked if you even attempt it." Well, and that's and, great, and it's because you're in, you're uh, you're listening to it, you're looking for it, you're you're in tune to that, and and unfortunately, a lot of people they they get into the, into their minds that they can't communicate with their animals because so many people all through the years when they were growing up told them they can. not Well, you know, if you stop and think about it, though, if you've got a dog that uh, you know is an indoor dog, when it's time for it to go to the bathroom, it will come to you and give you that indication. Hey, you better let me out for a while. And that's basically animal communication right there. It's absolutely. And, you know, it goes the other way, too. I mean, you can... You mean you can, can tell the dog you need to go outside and, and take... Well, we can, we can <laughs> tell them things like I always tell tell my clients, you know, if you, if you have problems taking your animals to the vets and they get really upset when they get in the car, get mm-hmm. into the carrier or something... Mm-hmm. Tell them, you know, don't don't just spring it on them. Tell them, you know, maybe a couple of days beforehand. You know, okay, in two days we're going to go in, we're going to go to the vets. We're going to get in the car. It's just going to be a checkup. We're going to come home because they understand. Even if you talk to them in 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 your voice, in our human voice, they understand. They have. They're they're far beyond what we give them credit for, and they understand. And I don't know how many people I've told that to who have come back and said, "I did that. I told them, and they got, you know, they 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 didn't fuss at all. We just went down there, and it was fine." It's interesting when you stop to think about it and, and look back uh, through the years of animals that you've had in the past, and you know, it, it is a fact that not even you don't have to be. With all due respect, you don't have to be someone like yourself who who, mm-hmm. who uses that as a as a living. You can uh, create the ability to do that, and and just by just by the example of the dog coming to you and saying, "I got to go outside," mm-hmm. you know, I mean, you there's a way that that animal can tell you absolutely that you realize that's what he's trying to tell you is that you now's a good time for for me to go outside, and you better better let me out. Right. 
and I think that everybody has this ability. I no. mean, you know, the, the the woman I told you about, she says, well, if you've been doing tarot, you can do this. Well, yeah. it, I, I think she was just saying that it's, you know, it will be an easier thing for you to step into because you're using the same skills. But I firmly believe that everybody has that skill. Everybody can do it if they believe they can do it and they, and they, they work to just hone it. You know, I mean, it, it, I think it's a skill that we've lost along the way you know i mean i think you know you you started out by asking me can have you done it since you were since you were a child well i think you know many times children will talk to animals or see spirits yeah, or see yeah. a lot of different things absolutely and they're just told no oh, well you're just imagining it no you can't talk to animals and then they they begin to believe it so they've kind of gotten gotten it beaten out of them i hadn't thought about it that way well, Lisa, and, Lisa, we're running out of time here. For, you're calling in from San Diego uh, and your website, www.pausetalk.net. Yes. Lisa, call us again and, and give us some uh, some updates on some stories that uh, that would, I think, fascinate our, our listening audience. I certainly look forward to you calling again. I will do so. Thank you so much for having me on. You betcha. Have a great day. You too. Take care. All righty. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Another fascinating story.